What's up with you, honey? Your tummy does look a bit bloated. I'm gonna take Roxy to the vets. So, we, we got here, we fed the dogs, then we went out and got some food, and then we were just kind of chilling out, and Roxy was trying to throw up and pacing a bit. And we're very worried that she's bloated because she's very restless. So we found a 24 hour vet, it's about 20 minutes away, which is risky because if you see bloat, you have to be very quick about it. So we're uh, we're on our way. We're gonna go down there. It's like, I don't know what time it is, 11 o'clock at night. Nine. Oh, it's nine, it feels like 11, it's been a long day. Her so. stomach does look. Yeah, it doesn't quite look right here. No. So um, I'm pretty sure we need to get there quick. Yeah, all right, bye. I know, we've been through this two years ago with her brother. Um, has she bloated before? No. Okay. Um, I just have to go through their risk and everything. Just, you know, it depends on how, how long it's been twisted, what kind of tissues compromise. Um, something that we can go ahead and do is do a lactate and we just sample and that can tell us, you know, how if the lactate is extremely high, it can be a poor prognostic indicator as far as um, tissue dying off and things like that. Um, but How soon can you get a surgeon here? Um, we, we would do the procedure. Oh, you can? Okay, cool. I just but don't really want to wait because the longer you wait, the more chance of it, of it dying. Um, I will go ahead and get an estimate together for you. Okay, thank you. I was really hoping it wasn't that. She didn't sound overly confident though, like, oh, there might be some twisting here. That's not... That's not certain, you know? <sighs> this stupid virus thing, we can't go in and check. And not that I would know what I'm looking for anyway. So the vet just called and it looks like Roxy is bloating um, with a twist in the stomach, which is exactly what we had with um, our other dog who, uh, what, two years ago? Yeah. Um, oh, longer than that, because he died. Oh, hold on, they're calling back. Okay, hold on, they're calling back. Hello? Hi, this is Sarah, a technician at the Animal Emergency Hospital, Sam Hello. Seals. Hello. Calling to get some history on Roxy. Okay. Is she on any medications currently? No. Galaprant. And is she current on vaccines? Yes. What kind of food do you feed? Honest Kitchen. Does she have any previous medical history we should be aware of? Only that spay incontinence. Um, she did have a touch of... Uh, they thought she had cancer when she was eight. Uh, it was a lymphoma, but it presented externally. It was a very rare case. But all her blood work's been fine for uh, cancer since, and her heart's good. Okay. And then what happened this evening that brought you in? Uh, she was just, we went for a little walk at like 7 o'clock, I guess. Japan, so I said, um, right, let's just get down to the vets. Uh, we were going into Fort Worth, but we drove past you guys and just stopped here. Okay. And prior to all of this, she's been eating and drinking okay? Yep, she drank a lot. Again, my husband said in the last hour, but I'm guessing that was related to this. Okay, no coughing, sneezing, vomiting, or diarrhea? No. She all right, um, I'm gonna get all the notes in the computer. We have her getting a fluid bolus right now. Okay. Just, to, just to get her a little more stable. Um, and the doctor will be touching base with you via phone to go over a treatment plan. And then we'll be, I'll call again to go over the estimate when we get to that point. Okay, fine. All right, we'll talk to you soon. All
30-day estimate, and um, there are some dogs that are doing well and can go home after 24 hours. Um, you know, if we get in there and find that we've got a stomach that is in really bad shape, we'll let you know. Um, we've had occasional times that we go in and find that there's a tumor that maybe was the cause of the GDV, and if that's the case, we'll let you know. Um, if Roxy's stomach is looking good, once we get things repositioned, then we'll get her pexied. Um, we'll take a look at her spleen, see if it's okay or not. If the blood supply to the spleen is compromised, then we'll have to remove that. Um, a lot of these dogs, if they're caught early, you know, do fairly well, uh, even the older kids. And we'll monitor for complications afterwards, like um, irregular heartbeats, any signs of toxicity from the um, bacteria that's been building up in our system. Um, so far, do you have any questions? Can I see her before she goes into surgery? Um, we would have to make it very quick. That's fine. So, I don't care. I just want to see uh, her. She's uh, my yeah, girl. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Okay. Um, I'm going to have um, Sarah call you back in just a minute. She seems pretty confident that she is bloating, more than the other lady. Yeah, she does. I thought you were going to ask, how confident are you that she is bloating, but I guess they wouldn't. But I don't suppose they'd cut open a 14-year-old dog if they weren't sure. Mm. Sounds the same. Yes, but she wasn't as bad, so hopefully, I mean, I don't care if I take out spleen, I didn't need a spleen either way. So hopefully... Ms. Werner? Yes, hello. Hi, it's Sarah again. Okay, I have your um, estimate from Dr. Young. It is with 40 hours in the hospital, the surgery to correct the GDV, as well as um, tacking the stomach to the body wall, the gastropexy. Um, injectable antibiotics, pain medications, um, anti-nausea injections, and blood work. The deposit tonight would be $5,192.27. The high end of the estimate because she also includes miscellaneous charges just in case something else comes up. We need an extra x-ray or extra blood work is $6,523.31. Okay. Well, can I come in and see her and give you the money then? We can't let you in the building. We can, I can give you the information to put the deposit online and I can bring her out to the car for you if you want to visit her, but we can't let you in the building. Same as your brother, you were meant to be my bionic girl. The love of my life with the Doberman. He had the same thing, he was eight years old when he bloated. I'm like, dog. <laughs> Honey, you are lucky enough to make it to 14. So, can you not die of this, please? Okay, I hope we caught it in time. We did with your brothers and he was way worse than this. How long do you reckon you want to know before she's done? I don't know what I, I know that she has another patient to see so it'll probably be about 40 minutes before we get her into surgery and then it's about an hour and she'll call you just as soon as she wakes up from anesthesia. She will, yep. okay. Yep, she sure will. How long after the surgery do they normally wake up? Um, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes okay, once we fine. turn the gas off. Right. It doesn't take too terribly long okay. and she'll make sure that she's extubated before she calls you. Hey puppy. Don't it's blame me, because I put you in the car. I know. This isn't my fault. I know. How's your chin? Daddy banged your chin. I did. Smash way. your chin on the face. <laughs> on the floor. I'm sorry. This is fine. You've been through so much worse. Remember your hydraulic occluder? That was a big surgery. <laughs> it was. You'll be all right. You'll come back and you'll snuggle on the bed, sweetie. Okay? Mummy will look after you all, all the time. This is the best time to be isolated and quarantined. It is, absolutely. Because <laughs> I'm not going anywhere and I will look after you, okay? But this is not going to be what kills you, okay? No, not having it.
already. I know I should be, I know it's been two years since tie-dye, but I'm not. Because she was fine. I don't like it when it's like, da -da 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 -da. oh. So we want to talk quickly about what bloat is, also known as gastric torsion or GDV in dogs. It's very common in deep chested breeds. So your Great Danes, Boxers, Dobermans, they're the ones that are more likely to get it. In this country they do tack the stomachs of these dogs when they're young and they don't so much in England. It's not really a, a thing. And what that is is you tack the stomach to the outer lining or the rib cage or something so that the stomach yeah. can't twist round and yeah i guess Cramp i didn't up. explain that very well <laughs> so it's a preventative thing and but it's because it's quite common they're just doing that when they're young when they're being spayed or something so. yes yeah, yeah so did you want to explain what bloat actually is because i've so, forgotten now. yeah so i mean i don't know exactly what it is but basically it's where the stomach imagine the stomach is this and it will twist and flip um and when it does that it cuts off the blood supply to kind of half the stomach um, and also to other organs as well, so like the spleen, intestines, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, so really, what we wanted to explain about this is we've seen this before in Roxy's brother, mm -hmm. um, who passed a couple of years ago. But about three years ago, he had bloat, um, and it took us a while to know the the symptoms. And so, by the time he actually got into the operating theatre, it was a few hours, and like his stomach was okay, I think, but his spleen, spleen was dead, so they had to cut his spleen out, and it took a lot more recovery, yeah. and it was a lot more expensive. <laughs> Um, so what we noticed in Roxy's case, what we noticed is um, she was fine during the day. She ate her dinner, which was fine. Um, and then it was about an hour later, I think, mm. and she was pacing. And she does that sometimes, right? If we've had a lazy day um, at the moment, we're on the coronavirus lockdown. So we're limiting the activities that we do. Um, uh, so we thought she was just being a bit restless, even though she is old. Um, and then eventually it was kind of like, mm, that's weird. Um, and it was a couple hours after she had eaten and she was trying to throw up and she didn't throw anything up. No. We also know that she had drunk a lot and that's very weird. Two hours after eating, there's normally something, not even bile or anything came up. So that's when we started to get concerned. We gave it another half an hour and then we just made the call to go down to the vet. Um, luckily, because we recognized this and we knew it was a thing, um, she is fine. So um, we she, caught it really early this really time, early, earlier yeah. than we caught ties. So, so there was no. They said her stomach was fine, all of her organs were fine. So we got it really early. So there was where the blood was cut off. It wasn't actually cut off for that long. Um, and and kudos to the vets as well. It did take them a while. They were crazy busy. Uh -huh. And with the whole Corona thing, we couldn't go into the vet. We had to. Um, stand outside, stand outside the and lot. they would text us and phone us instructions on what to do it the only time we actually saw anyone is when we handed her over so it's very rare that people catch this early a lot of dogs die from this you don't have a lot of time from the moment that no. you see your dog start pacing being restless getting that slight swell in the stomach you have a matter of hours to get your dog into the vet the longer you leave it they will die this is yeah, not this something is, that so one thing that i feel like people would have done if they were us and if they were in our situation they didn't know the symptoms is they would have said let's leave it until the morning because it was late right it was like yeah. 10 o'clock at night by the time we made the call they would say let's just leave it until the morning mm. and see what happened big mistake and yeah she would have been dead we would have woken up to roxy being dead so or we wouldn't because you would have paced around all night and we would have got angry with them <laughs> you know <laughs> you see the point um the other thing is i am going to warn you that it is expensive um i think when tyler had it that was about twelve thousand dollars for the operation um roxy was six it's that wasn't twelve dollars no not for the operation he had other complications so he because yeah. of his uh dcm 
another thing. Um, he had to have a heart check and he had to have regular medication for that to make sure his heart didn't stop. And he, he had a bunch of other little conditions. That's why it was more expensive. Um, but but either way, it's still... That was about 6000 for Roxy's. $6,000. Yeah, all right, she's old, but she doesn't have any other underlying health conditions. Also, it is emergency hours, and we're paying for yeah. that. Always happens, really late yeah. at night, um, <laughs> on a Sunday night as well. Um, so, yeah, it is expensive. I'm just warning you, so that's maybe something you want to think about. Um, insurance, I know a lot of people don't have insurance. Uh, in the UK, pet insurance is a big thing. It's no big deal. It's the norm. Um, so we were surprised when we came to the US, and insurance for pets is... is Expensive for one, but no one expensive. has it. Um, uh, there are a few yeah. insurance companies now that are starting to offer a kind of low rate, which is great. But I mean, her insurance this year has bumped up to nearly 250 a month. I'm, I almost cancelled it. Thank God I didn't. You did. Yeah, we thought at some point, uh, that's a bit much. But yeah. it's paid for itself, right? So, I mean, I, I can't, I'm not quick at math, but um, you know how many years of paying that a month is is that going to pay for so anyway we wanted to keep this really quick but we wanted people to know about bloat i know there's a lot of dog owners um, especially in the rv community so um, you need to know about bloat for the deep chested dogs um, and just know the signs and luckily obviously we're not happy this happened but obviously this uh it it was a happy ending yes it could it have was. been a lot 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 worse yeah. if we just made that call to say see how it is in the morning then yeah. this wouldn't be a very nice yeah. episode. Um, we'll periodically do an EKG on her um, to see, you know, if there's any recurrence of the arrhythmia. Oh, um, thank God. Okay. That's good news. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know so, it, so she was yeah. bloated. It was twisted. Um, sorry. Was it fully twisted then? Yes. Yeah, it was. Okay. So it was a little angry looking when I first got in there, but once we got it deflated and got a stomach tube down and, and flipped it back to the normal position, then the stomach color was great. It was nice and pink, oh, so healthy. Okay, and then um, you've just you've tacked her stomach as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, and then kind of the game plan from here is that we're concerned about. Okay. Um, but otherwise, just give us a call periodically, please. Perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, y'all take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Y'all take care. <laughs> Texas. Good news. <laughs> it is good news. Oh, thank God. I'm just glad there's no cancer, there's no tumours, there's nothing. Like, like, that was playing on my mind. I mean, because she has had bouts of cancer over the years, many years ago, and I knew, I, I thought it will come back at some point, you know? So, so that's good. It's going to really suck for the next few weeks. Why? Because we can't really leave her. 